Alright. Y'all don't realize it, but that was like a whole half hour ordeal. <laughs> I seen my timer stop, so I had to go back, replay, see where I stopped at, but I'm picking up part two here. So, I'll try to keep my head straight. Let's see. I left off, but it broke my arm. This one. Leave myself back up. And the top of my hand here wasn't coming out from here. It was, this was coming straight down. And the top of my hand was stuck right here. This was right there. That was freaky. And yeah, I was sitting there talking away. I just thought I'd said all that. I had to go back and relook. <laughs> but it's okay, I'm trying here. I'm working on it. So anyway. <clears throat> Golly, I don't remember how I was telling the story now. See, it messed me all up. Stupid phone quit on me. I think it cut before I told you any of the rest here. So, what had happened when I broke my wrist like that and everything, and my ribs, and... They told me once I was at the hospital, I had a golf ball size blood clot on my spleen. So they had me on standby in case that blood clot popped. They were going to have to cut me open and do emergency surgery. So I was like on, I had a 50-50 chance I was even going to live. I, was, I felt fine. I wasn't worried. Anyway. Rewind back. <clears throat> I was leaving work and I was hot, dehydrated. I was broke. That's why I was trying to work. I just started this new job. I didn't have money for nothing. I brought like half a jug of water or something. God, it was so hot. I'd already killed that before lunch. So I went the whole rest of the day, like four or five hours, hot as shit, sweating my ass off and nothing to drink. So I was like getting fuzzy headed, getting a headache by that point. I was dehydrated. So I was just trying to, all I could think of is if I can get in the car, I can get moving down the road and get some air. I can cool off and relax. And as soon as I hit a gas station, I'll get me something to drink. And I'll be fine. So I hadn't gone far at all. Like, I basically got to the first stop sign from where I was working at, and from that road, I could have the windows down and get some air and try to just get going. So I look one way, I can see a little ways, it's clear, I think I'm good, I can see almost close to a half mile. I look back the other way and you can see almost two miles and I see about a mile down the road it's still a ways back a couple of cars are coming up the road so I start pulling out and I'm thinking you know just normal driving like okay I'm making sure I'm pulling out fast enough but not too slow so it's like I'm flying up my ass and I'm just watching them and I'm pulling out I get out into the road and I swinging my head back as I get out into the road, you know, to see where I'm going and pull on out. And as soon as my head turns back and I'm like looking straight, I just see out my peripheral vision out this corner of my eye, a minivan one foot from my window. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I just grabbed the wheel and I tried to shove the gas pedal through the floor. That was all I could think of to do was I just went, Wah! This, please just let them work out here. And it did. 
luckily, number one, I didn't have my seatbelt on. So when this bitch hit me, she drove me over into the passenger seat. I was sitting perfectly in the passenger seat like I was a passenger. And the, my door where I was previously sitting was now in the middle of the car. So instead of breaking my arm and shattering my ribs and the blood clot on my spleen, I would have just been dead if I had the seatbelt on because the door was sitting past where I was at. So I would have just been crushed and dead if I didn't wear a seatbelt. And this stupid woman, she hits me so hard. She drives me about 20 foot down the road, at least, past the stop sign we were, I was just at. And because I'd floored it, I was, it kind of spun us around. She, as we were going down the road, I was still spinning because I was on the gas. And she drove me down the road. I ended up pulled off. I was on the side of the road facing the way I was trying to go. But like I said, about... 20, 30 feet, whatever it was, down the road, looking back towards the intersection, I was just that. And she had slid on about another 20 foot, not, maybe 30, she slid, she'd slid another 20, 30 foot or so down the road behind me, parking up the road where we were just at. So she spun all the way around, is now facing the wrong way, and I'm spun around and down the road, it was like we both just pulled up the road and parked. We were both right off the road and both facing from the direction she just came from. Oh, and the speed limit's 35. She did all this just doing 35 miles an hour, and that's what the police put on the police report. And she, she drove herself a half mile down the fucking road, and spun me in the old 70 real steel actual car, not the junk they got nowadays, doing 35. Bullshit. So, anyway. I was half out of it. I feel the car just, just idling, barely idling. Like the car was barely running. It sounded like an old drag car or something at this point. It was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. But it was, in car, it, was, it was still in gear, still running and moving, barely, but moving. And my first thought was like, oh shit, I'm going to get hit again. Fuck. And like I said, I'm in the passenger seat, so I go to reach for the steering wheel. And that's when I see my hand is just jacked. So I immediately just don't even look at it. I'm looking at the windshield, and I just pull my hand back and put it against my stomach and my stuff and just leave it there. I don't look down. I ignore it. It's like, okay, I must be in shock or something because I do not feel a thing. Even though my hand is like hanging off my arm or whatever, it's like all jacked. And <clears throat> my next thought is, okay, I'd, I'd reached over, I threw the car up in park and turned the key off. So now I know I'm not moving, I'm safe. I try to. I, I think I grabbed the door handle and gave the door a couple of nudges, and it was locked. And I wasn't thinking it was locked. I thought it was jammed or something. So instead of beating on it or doing something trying to get out that door, I just assume it's jammed and I ain't can't get out it. Well, meanwhile, I got the the whole driver's side of the car is in the middle of the car. And there's a gap. We drove in so far, 
it was like this. It's like it just it caused the gap between the back door and the front door and everything. There was enough gap for my skinny ass legs to be able to squeeze between the doors and get out. But it took me a second to click and think of that. I tried to push the door open. I realized it wasn't going to happen. So I had to pull it back in and recreate the gap. And then, of course, the window's gone and everything. I had it down anyway, but it's just glass everywhere where it shattered inside the door. So I get, I, got, I lean my whole upper body out the window and stuff or whatever. Like, kind of squeeze a leg through and hold the door, get my other leg out, I push in on the door and pull my other leg out. And yeah, that's how I broke my arm and car got totaled. I only had it about a month. I had it like four to, I know no more, six weeks, four to six weeks. And now it's completely totaled. This damn woman doing 30, 35 miles an hour completely demolished it. Twisted the whole side of the car. The, like, I don't think there was anything left usable of that car. Just twisted it up so bad. The frame was shot. The body was shot. The hood was twisted. The trunk was twisted. The bumpers had twisted. Like, the only thing that might have been still usable on that car was a passenger door or something. The whole rest of the car just crumpled like a tin can. She hit me so hard. <clears throat> oh, and later, about a month later, I got a call from the insurance company. They're like, we might have to call you to court and testify what happened and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'll tell you what happened. I was like, a woman totaled my car doing the speed limit. So anyway, that's that story. And I'm out of town. I'm already starting to run long again. So until my next video, see y'all later, taters. This is Hillbilly Dean saying adios.